Authorities continue to investigate the recent crime wave that swept across northern Berkshire County, with many of its residents in a state of anxiety and panic. We interrupt our current program at the request of the Massachusetts State Police. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. At 3.34 a.m., Massachusetts State Police confirmed the presence of a potential group of active and unidentified home invaders who have targeted 49 residences since approximately 11.15 p.m. last night. The attacks appear to be random, spanning across the towns of North Adams, Adams, Cheshire, Savoy. Something lurks within Mount Greylock, the highest peak in the state of Massachusetts. Greylock, as a series, is made up of eight tapes that explain the strange happenings in Berkshire, Massachusetts, based around this single point of interest. These strange happenings include, but are not limited to, bodies falling from the sky, children mysteriously disappearing, the growing of extra limbs and teeth, and gruesome depictions of deformed humans. If this at all sounds interesting, then stick around as I cover every tape uploaded to the Greylock YouTube channel as of this video's production. So please, sit back, relax, and don't- Primary systems online. Meeting sequence complete. Emergency shutdown protocols disengaged. System was offline for time code 0106. Contact technician for assistance. Welcome to Signal Dime USA Enhanced Access Operations. Please enter your clearance credentials. The very first tape is brief and confusing. Taking place in what seems to be a research facility, we hear the facility's security program speaking to an unknown person, saying, Welcome to Simeodyne USA Instant Access Operations. As the tape progresses, the unknown person overrides the security protocol and grants themselves administrator privileges. Error. These credentials are not recognized. Clearance credential requirement eliminated. Administrator privileges granted. Welcome back, I'm no user ID. What would you like to do? Accessing archival storage form, GBI. In response to the question, what would you like to do? The unknown person says, search you. This prompts the program to access archival storage, followed by a glitch on screen reading, fatal error. Location, morgue. Contact on-site technician immediately. Data extraction initiated. Data extraction, 10% complete. Data extraction, 4% complete. Data extraction, 80% complete. Data extraction, complete. All Near the end of the video, the security camera captures what looks to be a smudge, or some sort of distortion warping the screen, before the tape glitches and ends, leaving us wondering who accessed what information, and where it was sent to. can come from the pursuit of darkness. Let me read to you, dear believer, the words of the late brilliant Charles Spurgeon, who discussed this at length in a sermon on- Tape 002 begins with someone driving through a snowy forest at night, listening to a radio sermon discussing the ideas of Charles Spurgeon. The camera cuts, and the car stops at a dead end. As our driver gets out of the car, 
we see a distortion similar to what was captured by the security cameras in the prior tape. What proceeds is footage of the driver wandering around the woods, finding blood scattered on the ground and on branches. Interestingly enough, every time the distortion appears on screen, the tape seems to cut to a different point of view, as indicated by the increased saturation in the footage. What I believe is that these two POVs occur at different times, as indicated by blood being on the branch in the saturated clip, while it's no longer as noticeable in the latter clip. The truth behind this tape lies within the distorted audio that plays when the saturated footage comes on screen. It's hard to make it out, but what I was able to transcribe paints a clear enough picture of what's going on. and accept what it is that he bestows upon you. I believe that what we're seeing is footage of the first person to discover whatever tragedy occurred on Mount Greylock, along with footage taken later of someone who went to investigate afterward. It's hard to tell who the dashcam footage belongs to, but despite that, the voice at the end makes it clear that, while the driver might try to escape, once the devil has looked into your eyes, you're tethered to him. Greetings, and welcome to the preconditional protocols and orientation video system provided by Unit 13, as part of the United States Army and Project Stargate, created in partnership with Simeodyne USA. On behalf of all of us here at Unit 13, congratulations on your selection as one of our testing candidates. You luckily have a lot of questions, and this video is designed to answer them all. First, let's go over some background. In tape 003, originally intended for a man named Alexander Michael Marsh, we learn a little bit about the goal of the so-called Project Stargate and Unit 13. The orientation tape introduces us to beings known as thought forms, the manifestation of a person's will, emotion, or other deeply psychological energized state into a semi-physical form, 
existing as not only an extension of that person, but as its own independent and sentient entity. Thought forms are also able to be witnessed and experienced by third parties, and are not limited solely to the person who developed them. Thought forms have been formed to serve as familiars, companions, or even friends to those who conjure them. According to key literature, thought forms can be intentionally formed by a single person or multiple people, though they can be The tape then goes on to explain that while thought forms are normally created intentionally, they can also be created on accident. For example, one who grieves the loss of another could pour so much of their focus and emotions into thinking about their loss that they create a thought form. As time progresses and the thought form continues to shape itself, it will eventually become as tangible as a real person. The goal of Project Stargate and Unit 13 is to see how thought forms can aid the United States and its citizens. To do this, the government enlisted a man named Dr. Bernard Hayes, a professional on the subject. With the help of the aforementioned Simeodyne USA, the minds behind Project Stargate developed the Thought Form Manifestor, a device used for quickly creating independent and self-sufficient thought forms. The most notable information to take away from this tape is the description of thought forms. As the tape says, thought forms are strikingly similar to ghosts, moving objects, manipulating technology, and even speaking words or short phrases. Referring back to the prior two videos, numerous times we've seen translucent entities and the distortion of technology similar to the common depiction of ghosts. It's quite possible that what we've been seeing this entire time are thought forms, roaming around and, in some instances, interacting with their environments. Without much context, we're then dropped into the found footage-esque tape number 4, where we witness a home invasion. of the Massachusetts State Police. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. All normal broadcasting has been discontinued. The latter half of the tape consists of an emergency alert concerning Northern Berkshire County, Massachusetts, the same county containing Mount Greylock. At 3.34 a.m., Massachusetts State Police confirmed the presence of a potential group of active and unidentified home invaders who have targeted 49 residents since approximately 11.15 p.m. last night. The attacks appear to be random, spanning across the towns of North Adams, Adams, Cheshire, Savoy, and Windsor. Residents are urged to take the following actions immediately. Wake all occupants of your home. Lock all the doors and windows. Close all curtains and blinds. Gather in a secure area of your home where multiple exits are available to prevent yourself from being cornered. Additionally, residents are urged to arm themselves with a blunt object or firearm if available and licensed. Only resort to self-protection if a suspect has entered your home, poses an active threat to you or your family, and you are unable to escape safely. Police are currently unable to determine any physical description of any of the assailants involved in these attacks. Law enforcement will be armed and patrolling. Interfering with this investigation can result in lethal force being inadvertently used.
At this point in time, I believe we're supposed to assume that thought forms are behind the many home invasions, considering that every town named is near Mount Greylock, where thought forms were spotted in the second tape. It makes sense that police are unable to determine any physical characteristics of the assailants, since most may very well be less tangible thought forms, capable of being in ghost-like states, but still able to interact with the real world. However, what we saw at the end is very real and terrifying. While thought forms can appear as transparent ghosts, they can also take any other form, according to the prior tape. Thought forms can appear in virtually any configuration. They could look like a person, an object, an animal, or even something as abstract as the physical representation of an emotion. That being said, it's recommended to brace yourself before touring the thought form chambers, as thought forms can also take on appearances that could be considered disturbing, like a creature one might see in a childhood nightmare. Whatever reached through the window could very well be a thought form that has taken a tangible form. But where did these entities come from? Did Unit 13 fail to secure the thought forms they were testing with, or perhaps they came from somewhere else? such as Mount Greylock, which seems to be the center of this whole ordeal. Well, hello again, Tiffany. Oh, hi, Wanda. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. No dad this time? No, unfortunately. He couldn't get off work today. And have you decided on a name for your baby boy yet? Yep. We're going with Max. Ooh, Max, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a nice, strong name. That's why my fiance wanted it so bad. He says it'll help me. Tape 005 consists of audio from a hospital, where a woman named Tiffany Crisaldi has come in for an ultrasound, and what follows could potentially be upsetting for some viewers. Let's get some measurements to see exactly exactly how much he's grown. Maybe something to do with the power. I'll be right back. Um, okay. What are you talking about? After a short interference with the ultrasound, Tiffany's baby disappears, and according to the barely legible newspaper at the end, Tiffany Crisaldi, elementary school teacher, 29, died unsuspectingly Monday morning. She had suffered tremendously after the sudden loss of her unborn son, Maxwell Marsh, on March 31st. She was unable to live with the heartache any longer. It's clear that there was some sort of interference from thought forms as they are known to mess with technology, and the face we see for a single frame is akin in nature to the other scene at the end of the last tape. Additionally, during the interference, we can see a newspaper on screen. It's even more difficult to make out what this one says, but there's enough to know what's going on. Bizarre events leave Berkshire in terror. Authorities mute. Despite the fact that the Massachusetts State Police engaged in emergency broadcasting system, whether they to the local police department, clarity. While it's to ascertain what exactly happened, a number of arrests have been made. Clearly those parts are about the series of home invasions, but looking off to the right, we can see more. We can see the words, pregnant woman, and vanished, meaning that Tiffany is not the first case of a mother losing their child. It's unknown why or how thought forms are stealing children. Some even theorize that the children themselves are thought forms who are willed into existence by the parents and eventually vanished. But I know for certain that these strange events only scratch the surface of what's going on in Berkshire County. 
humanity has spilled tirelessly past through a great many trials of interlaking forties to achieve but one singular goal. A goal that countless men have withered away and died. Tape 006 begins with a recorded speech given by Dr. Bernard Hayes, the same man who was hired to work on Project Stargate, before glitching and switching over to a recording from Simeodyne, USA. Much like the first tape, the credential requirement is bypassed, and this user breaks into the account of Project Director Franklin Porter. This automatically begs the question, is this a thought form manipulating the system? Most likely. Nevertheless, the user gets access to a series of messages sent to Franklin Porter from Paul Morelli concerning the construction of a facility. There are nine messages in total, spanning from March 24, 1987 to March 30th. Hey Frank, it's Paul Morelli. We ran into somewhat of an issue today. We came across these tunnels inside the mountain, pretty deep in, but uh, well, this is going to sound a little crazy, but... He told me to call if anything strange came up, and uh, I figured this qualifies. People have been here before. Some obviously man-made sh** in there, like carvings and stone. In the first message, Paul tells Frank that he ran into some tunnels in the mountain he and his crew are excavating. Part of the tunnel is caved in, but the part that isn't is filled with ancient man-made carvings. Paul says that, soon, he and his crew are going to try and bust into the part that's caved in. A day later, Paul informs Frank that a number of his crew are sick. Mysteriously, the section of the caved-in tunnel has been cleared out, though none of Paul's crew had seen anyone come in. What they have seen is something running around the woods surrounding the site. A few of the guys said they have seen something running around in the woods surrounding the site. I think it's probably a deer or whatever, but seeing all the ruckus we're making out here, you know? But they all insisted it was something else. Something like a, a real tall man. For safety's sake, say we're going to avoid the tunnel until I get back from you. Alright, bye now. In the third message, a man Frank had sent over to take pictures falls ill after entering the tunnel and has to be carried out by Paul's crew. When he got here, but we practically had to carry him back to his car when he was done. I don't know if he caught whatever's going around, but... Figured you should know. Also, we found some really old sh down there, Frank. We also learned that a man named Arnold Rivers, the crew's resident archaeologist, is writing up a report on his findings inside the cave for Frank. Bye. Message 4. March 26th, 1.03 p.m. Frank, something ain't right here. Crew's getting worse, more sick. I saw that thing the guys have been talking about last night, stalking around in the tree line. I swear it had a face. <sighs> a a anyways, just, just call me back as soon as you can, Frank. Message 8. March 29th, 10.13 p.m. In the next message, Paul describes how much of his crew has become unresponsive, and though he's tried to call emergency services, the phones keep ringing indefinitely, except for when Paul calls Frank, to which an answering machine is reached. Paul rightfully assumes that whatever is in the cave is causing all of this, so he's going to go look for himself, as it calls to him. You know what? First I'll start when you go across that tunnel. I feel like I need to figure out what's down there. I think whatever's down there could help my crew. But most of all, I feel like something really bad's gonna happen if I don't go down, so I'll be going down tonight. Message 9. March 30th, time unavailable.
we eventually get confirmation that what's haunting Paul's crew is indeed a thought form, judging by the notable interference with the camera, which explains why almost all the phones were malfunctioning. At the end of the tape, after Paul's final disturbing message, we see the same masked person that we saw flash on screen in the fifth tape. If I had to guess, this is a fully developed thought form, one that is as tangible as a real person, explaining why Paul's crew mistook it for a human stalking them. Rewinding a bit to 6 minutes and 12 seconds into the tape, we can see that the redacted word turns out to be Unit 13, meaning that Paul and his crew were digging out this mountain for the construction of the Unit 13 facility, whether they knew it or not. This doesn't exactly explain what Paul found in those tunnels or why his crew fell ill, but I believe that all of this fell within Frank's expectations. In the first message, Paul explains that Frank told him to call if anything strange came up. This combined with the fact that they were only able to reach out to Frank's phone makes it seem as though Frank knew that something strange would happen. This makes sense, because if Frank is working with Simeodyne and Project Stargate, we can assume that he has some knowledge of thought forms. Authorities continue to investigate the recent crime wave that swept across northern Berkshire County, with many of its residents in a state of anxiety and panic. It was two weeks ago when the emergency broadcast system was engaged to warn residents to secure their homes due to the activity of a group of individuals who had been... Two weeks after the series of home invasions, this news broadcast airs, claiming that the suspects are part of an anti-American militia group, and that police have the situation under control. Operating out of western Massachusetts, called... Police have made numerous arrests in connection to... Militia and officials continue to release statements to assure the public that they are safe once again. In the last third of the broadcast, the screen begins to glitch, and footage of conjoined twins appears. Immediately after, multiple bits of newspaper are shown. The first of which is a picture of Tiffany and her husband, Alex Marsh, discussing the loss of their child. The second newspaper reads the following. These events are only the tip of the iceberg, says Jim Milgren, a former police officer who now works as a private investigator and hosts a radio show centered around government transparency and accountability. There are horrifying reports of people, healthy grown adults, becoming deformed, growing extra limbs, teeth growing out of their scalp, people developing severe mental conditions, or even sickness. This would explain the conjoined twins we just saw. The screen then switches back to the news anchor, his face now deformed, and the screen reading, Liar. As for an explanation of the deformities spreading around Berkshire, I don't have one just yet. But the most important bit of information is from the slide about Tiffany and Alex. If you remember correctly, the tape which introduces us to Project Stargate, Unit 13, and Thought Forms was intended for Alexander Michael Marsh. This would give some credence to the aforementioned theory that Tiffany's child was simply a thought form which vanished after enough time, as Alex would have had the means to create that very thought form, but that can't be confirmed for the time being. It is interesting though that seemingly average citizens such as Paul Morelli and Alexander Marsh are getting involved in Project Stargate and Unit 13 schemes, whatever those schemes may be. Well, that broadcast went completely f***ed up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our CIA liaison for the past two hours. What the f*** happened? We're looking into it, sir, but we experienced no issues with the broadcast on our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before even reaching the transmitter, but once we started receiving phone calls from viewers, we switched to a backup transmitter. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? The final tape takes place right after the last. The news broadcast was shut down, and GBS executive Alan Rosenbaum is chewing out the producers for it. The news anchor, Don Wright, mysteriously left the studio following the incident. Concerning what we saw, it was seems fairly obvious that the broadcast was hijacked by thought forms, though for what purpose is unknown. 
Sorry, the file you are trying to access has been destroyed and can no longer be executed or retrieved. Please choose another file. Sorry, sorry, it's so old. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Opening file. Arnold Rivers personal log. Final. My name is Arnold Eugene Rivers. The date is April 8th, 1987, about a quarter past nine at night. I was involved in the Morelli construction project at Mount Greylock. I was hired due to my background in anthropology. Two minutes into the tape, we hear the voice of the Simeodyne USA security protocol, which is once again being hacked into for files. The file in question was created by Arnold Eugene Rivers, the archaeologist who investigated the cave and its artifacts with Paul Morelli's crew. Inside the cave, Arnold finds an assortment of artifacts from many different cultures, ranging back to 11,000 BCE, some belonging to cultures we have yet to study. Many of the artifacts were pre-colonial, some were from Native American tribes, but there were other artifacts, some Mesoamerican and others were shockingly Clovis in nature. Finding Clovis artifacts here means that people have been coming to Mount Greylock since at least 11,000 BCE. The tunnels all connected to a series of chambers deep into the interior of the mountain. That's where a majority of the relics were found. There were old baskets of herbs and spices, pottery, weapons and armor, talismans, and other religious items, countless other things. But all of it was there purposely as offerings. Police Department, Dispatcher Carey speaking. Um, yes, I'm calling to report a break-in at my co-worker's house. What is your name, sir? My name is Liam Hollander. Okay, Liam, you said this was... Suddenly, the tape switches to a phone call between the producer sent to Don Wright's house and 911. What follows is a picture of Don Wright's body, gruesomely reminiscent of Paul Morelli's. Is anybody hurt? <laughs> Then I witnessed many altars constructed out of the mountain stone. As we jump back to Arnold's tape, he describes to us how much of the cave was dedicated to altars, offerings, and sacrifices involving humans and animals. Arnold reports his findings to Frank, asking him to discontinue the construction of the facility. However, Frank disregards this. What follows is the documentation of the survivors from the Morelli Construction Group. It's here that we learn that the mountain they were excavating is, in fact, Mount Greylock. Now loading. Notes. Uncommunicative. Warning. Patient will attack on site. Do not interact. Immunity to pain. Patient exhibits cannibalistic tendencies. Now loading. Notes. Communicative. Communicate with caution. Warning, patient actively pretends to be benevolent and friendly. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. Now loading. Notes. Communicative. Hazardous. Warning, patient possesses inhuman power of suggestion and influence over others. Do not interact. I consider myself incredibly lucky to not be in that condition right now. I heard something awful happened up in Mount Greylock, and then simultaneously, there were all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. Following his separation from the project, Arnold fears for his life, and talks to a private investigator to share his findings and hopefully piece together everything that has been happening in Berkshire County. Talking about it. inside my bedroom closet. If something happens to me and you'll find any tapes or files somehow, please bring it to the investigator, Jim Malcolm of North Adams. That goes for this video footage as well.
Come on out, it's the police. Arnold's fears were justified because at the end of the tape, he meets his demise at the hands of the masked entity we have been seeing throughout the series. And that's everything there is to cover as of now. I assume this series is still ongoing as there are many questions yet to be answered, but I'll share with you all my final thoughts and theories. In the third tape, the narrator mentions that many different people from all religions and areas have practiced the creation of thought forms. I believe that this is supposed to directly link with all the artifacts found in Mount Greylock, which would make Mount Greylock some sort of hotbed for creating thought forms, used by many different people throughout history. Project Stargate realized this, and sent the Morelli Construction Company out there to begin excavation for the Unit 13 facility. However, I believe this awakened whatever was lying dormant in Mount Greylock, most likely a multitude of thought forms. This led to the thought forms wreaking havoc on Mount Greylock and the surrounding area, using their supernatural powers to cause the deformations and other paranormal events happening in Berkshire County. Of course, for now, this is all speculation, but let me know what you- If you'd like to watch the series in its entirety, I'll leave a link to the channel in the description of this video. And if you have a topic that you want to suggest for a future video, don't be afraid to contact me. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and good night.